But yeah, let's talk about our new Death's Oath Occultist that is also life-based, which is a lot different than what it used to be because you used to play it as CI. But after doing extensive research, if you've watched the stream and a lot of thinking, I would say that at this point, CI is still better, but very, very, very tiny amount. And it's like a tremendous amount of investment. The biggest thing, the biggest advantage about uh, life Death's Oath right now is the fact that it uh, has a lot of armor and armor is really powerful with Molten Shell and Vol Molten Shell. I'm also going to be experimenting on this build with a setup that's also going to be using Determination, bringing me up to 60,000 armor. It's quite ridiculous. So defensively, I'm going to cover that a little bit more uh, in a bit. The basic idea behind playing a Death's Oath build is utilizing Death's Oath, the Astro Plate, for the level 20 Death Aura skill that it gives you. Unfortunately, it does have a downside, which is you take 400 and 50 chaos damage per second for three seconds on kill, which might seem like a lot, but it's really not if you have enough chaos resistance. And with Divine Flesh, that's even going to put us at 85 chaos resistance. So it really only takes as much as having to invest in your gear, which also isn't as much uh, with Withering Presence and Purity of Flesh. Death Aura is a pretty unique skill. It's an aura, it's, it's an actual aura that deals uh, area damage, chaos area damage, I believe it was bumped up to like 800 damage per second, which isn't a lot, but it does have a lot more scalability than other uh, skills because we can scale it with aura effect. So that's why we have to travel to something like influence. We can also scale it with aura area of effect as well. So something like leadership is going to be really useful on the CI builds in the past. You would pick up charisma. I don't really find it necessary here. We don't have to worry about I'm picking up something like uh, Discipline. The gear can be a little bit tricky because we do need Chaos Resistance. Uh, like I mentioned previously, we are playing an Occultist, so we do use Withering Presence for the extra Chaos Resistance. And we are also using one of the new uh, Timeless Jewels, which is a Glorious Vanity of Kshibakwa. And this gives our Keystones Divine Flesh, which is all damage taken by passes Energy Shield, 50% of elemental damage taken as Chaos damage, and plus 10 maximum Chaos resistance, which makes it so that our Death South degenerates us a little bit less, but you also take substantially less damage. There are a couple places where you can fit it. I honestly don't get a whole lot out of it outside of just the Keystone itself. Uh, the Vault Timeless Jewels make it so that all the uh, surrounding nodes are randomized. In my case, I basically end up with like a little bit of armor and nothing much else. And as for the other jewel, we also utilize an energized armor, which is also pretty cool as well. This is in the melding spot that gives us a substantial amount of armor, which is quite nice. Weapon on a wand because the non ailment chaos damage over time multiplier is only rollable on the wand unless you're willing to craft it. My wand right now is pretty crappy, but I'm going to be replacing it for hopefully a T1, maybe multi modded in the future. We'll see. As for the necessary items, pretty much just the Death's Oath. The unfortunate part about Death's Oath is that you do need five off colors, and there are many guides about that. I won't. Uh, cover it too much if you want more information you can look it up but the basic premise is that you roll uh, it with the sockets from the crafting bench you don't have to six link your death south that's a, something super cool but on average it will cost you you know depending on the prices like three exalted orbs uh, to actually get it up and running uh, i think it's an average of about 1800 jewelers so other than that you can utilize the solstice vigil and that's that's pretty much it. You can use it in presence as well uh, with chaos. I honestly find the Solstice Vigil to be more useful because of the single target and the uh, molten shells. But uh, if somehow you only have it in presence, go for that. Absolutely, you can get a helmet crafted with Aberrant. I highly recommend you craft your gear with Aberrant Fossil in general because uh, you do need the chaos resistance. And especially on a helmet, you can get the nearby enemies have minus nine to chaos resistance, which helps out your damage. It helps out the damage of your explosions from profane bloom. Super duper useful stuff. Everything else, try and get armor, try and cover your resistances. Nothing particularly special. And you might be a little bit worried about the amount of life that I've got, but 
like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about the defense. We've got the three curses, temporal chains, blasphemy, and despair. There isn't a defensive curse. I don't really know why I'm mentioning it. We've got malediction, which is 10% reduced damage. We've got fortify. That's super helpful. We've got the divine flesh, which makes it so that we take like 20% less elemental uh, damage overall. And like I mentioned, currently I have 29,000 armor with my granite iron skin active. This is without determination, with determination, this would be 60,000. And that pretty much caps us out for our molten shell, give us, giving us uh, 10,000 EHP on our molten shell. And we've also got a separate setup that we can activate whenever you want, so we don't have to hit, wait for the actual hit. And then the Vol Molten Shell would be 30,000 block damage. In my case, it's about 20,000. That's a lot. I mean, you don't really expect yourself to be hit for 30,000 damage in a you know 20 second window. Uh, in the case of this build, that's half of the map already cleared. And especially if you're doing Legion, it makes it super comfortable. Overall, the build might not have a whole lot of HP, but it's definitely, definitely very tanky. And we're looking to make it even, even tankier in the future, maybe swapping around some potions and just overall getting a bit more armor on my gear as I haven't made a super major investment into it just yet. The real disadvantage of the live version of Death South is the fact that the only way for us to regenerate our life is either uh, life and kill or simply using a divine life flask for potions i am still using a silver flask i'll probably be switching out to uh, a searching life jewel with onslaught on kill and instead of replacing it with a sulfur uh, flask that should hopefully help me a little bit with the regen and extra damage is always super helpful other than that we've got a granite iron skin which i'm definitely sticking to we got a basalt bleeding flask and we've got a typical alchemist quicksilver of adrenaline every now and then i am popping my face run but honestly with the new shield charge eh, i don't really find it to be too useful uh, for the pantheon i'm using soul of lunaris and soul of relakesh you can go soul soul of ranking but i haven't found it uh, to be a problem i do have the chance to avoid being stunned boots I really never ever get hit, but I'm sure that if I do get hit on a boss fight, eventually this is going to end up being kind of a problem, but hopefully it's going to be like a one-time situation. Um, honestly, even Soul of Solaris is good. Soul of Arakali is good. Whatever you want to go for, Soul of, Soul of Arakali does help us with uh, not getting shocked nearly as much. And as for leveling, it's been a breeze. I mean, there's nothing too much. You just level with Essence Drain. Plenty of uh, build guides out there. You can travel to the left first. You can travel to the right. Just try and stick around uh, life nodes and some damage over time. If you have a tabula rasa, that's super useful. Uh, essence drain leveling is just very nice. You might struggle a little bit with the sockets uh, for the essence drain contagion and the blight, but it's really nothing particularly necessary to link those. You can level with Bane as well if you really want to. Uh, doesn't make much of a difference. In my case in particular, I believe I traveled out through the spell damage nodes, which mine aren't, but yeah, there's spell damage nodes here usually. Then I traveled into the Templar, then I traveled over to the minion nodes, yeah, then over to the right and pick up stuff like Atrophy and uh, Hexmaster, as those blasphemy curses do make leveling really easy. As for when exactly you're switching to Death's Oath, I personally switched at level 70. It was a little bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't get to pick up a whole lot of HP. I pretty much had no damage nodes. Everything that we did was traveling for aura effect. Don't necessarily have to worry about that too much because unless you've got Malediction, which should be your Uber Lab, right? You should be going Void Beacon into Withering Presence, into Profane Bloom and Merciless Lab. Um, until you have Malediction, you won't be able to run three curses anyway. So you don't need all this mana reservation, but the aura effect is damage. So yeah, if it makes it more comfortable for you, don't try and travel as much and maybe focus more on direct damage or just get an uber lap carry like I did. And then you're pretty much going to have the build up and running as soon as possible. And then within the next 10 levels, you can pick up all of the other major nodes, uh, like all your AOE and atrophy and corruption. Or you can just play Essence Drain until like level 80 and then switch. That would be probably the more optimal thing to do. But if you're really burning to play Death South, go for that instead. But yeah, 
wait up for the full build guide. You can check out the character in Path of Building in the description below. And the full build guide, hopefully if I don't die, should be out soon. But considering the defense, I don't see it happening. But I'm sure I'm going to find a way. But yeah, see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.